Well, hello again. We uh, continue our study of God's holy word as, uh, as it takes up the, uh, uh, the topic of angels and demons, which has uh, cast us all over the place through God's word, Old and New Testament, and always has us hovering around the work and redemption that we have in Christ Jesus, indeed the, uh, the, the ministering angels that God has created to serve us, even as they behold his face and, and give him their praise. Um, uh, let's begin with prayer, and we'll uh, uh, resume a, a little bit of our look at, uh, although the scriptures don't give any detailed account uh, of the fall of Satan. We, we had looked at a couple of those uh, with kind of Old Testament uh, imagery. Uh, likewise, the, we, we don't have a, uh, you know, the, the way that scripture has depicted the fall of the angels who then follow in Satan's rebellion. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we're going to take a look at Revelation chapter 12. That's where we'll begin with one of these, uh, the uh, apocalyptic, uh, uh, very symbolic uh, 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 given vision of the fall of the angels, as, as Lisa says, the church has kind of commonly understood it, and for good reason. I mean, it, it's a, a very picturesque drama that unfolds with this, uh, this uh, uh, vision that is presented for us in the book of Revelation. But uh, let's, let's begin with prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us the victory over the devil through your Son, Jesus. We draw strength from the protection you give through your holy angels and that you grant to us all and all Christians during the spiritual warfare in which we are engaged. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So Revelation uh, chapter 12. Uh, if you're familiar with the book of Revelation, there's a, a, a series of different scenes or kind of large visions which when you rightly understand, uh, they're kind of giving a, a, a very particular, a certain like camera angle lens view of the history of the world and God's service to his people in redeeming them uh, in it. So, you know, there's some grand sweeps of history. This is a marvelous example of that. Uh, Romans chapter 12, uh, looking out of my ESV, I see it's uh, uh, entitled The Woman and the Dragon. And uh, uh, even best when you when we hear this, it's a it's a short account and and very picturesque. Again, heavy with symbolism, uh, uh, and yet behind that symbolism, without trying to read into things, and yet pulling from uh, what we do know that certain symbols mean in other parts of the Book of Revelation, or how John has used language before, and certainly. Uh, letting Scripture uh, inform us uh, about Scripture in other places, we can uh, round out a, a, a fascinating picture here. It's kind of a, uh, a a brief but a very comprehensive telling of the of the history of the of the world and our redemption uh, in a rather memorable way. But uh, uh, you know the, the picture here of uh, the, the angels who are then swept out. Uh, here they're depicted as stars, the stars in heaven, and it's not uncommon for uh, stars to re represent angelic uh, 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 figures, as we see earlier in the book of Revelation. Uh, and so here with, a, with a, the dragon's tail, and the dragon, of course, is Satan, sweeping out one-third, you know, even the, the use of the number, one-third, and how are we to interpret that without trying to, we already said, well, we, we don't try to, uh, we don't know when the angels were created, we know that the angels are created. We don't know the exact number of the angels, uh, although we are told, you know, uh, the myriads and thousands upon thousands, uh, uh, you know, the, this great number of this heavenly host. Uh, we're never told about the fall of Satan specifically, but we are given uh, 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 pictures of that fall through other uh, types of Satan that we found in history, like the king of Babylon in Isaiah 14, or uh, uh, the king of Tyre in, uh, in Ezekiel. Uh, but here, uh, well, let's, let's begin in uh, chapter 12, and I'll maybe make a couple of comments here and there. This might be one you're familiar with. I can't help but have in my mind uh, some of the Albrecht Durer uh, woodcuts. Uh, Albrecht Durer, maybe a name familiar to you. He is one of the great artists of all history, a German guy. Uh, precedes Luther just a little bit, did a lot of... Uh, 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 art that kind of uh, we associate with uh, the Reformation. And he had a series of woodcuts. 
uh, you probably it probably wouldn't take all that much to to find the one that uh, 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 was inspired by Revelation chapter twelve. But he did a whole series of woodcuts on uh, on the visions of Revelation. And uh, uh, but let me let me read this. I, you probably find Google that Albrecht Durer. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, Revelation 12, you'll probably, a couple, uh, a couple of images will come up and you can kind of see how, how he presented this. But uh, here is a great sign. So recognize from the beginning, this, you know, it's a sign that is given. It's not pulled out as, you know, the historical events, although this sign expresses what indeed has happened in history and what God has done and is doing in history through his son. But a great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, picturing that, the moon, and on her head a crown of 12 stars. So the, the woman here is kind of representative of God's people and a, a, a royalty. You know, the, uh, she, she bears a crown. There's the 12 stars there. Stars here are kind of representative of the, uh, uh, the people of God, 12 being the number, certainly, of the Old Testament uh, uh, tribes, uh, as well as the, the number of the, of, of the, the New Testament church. Uh, that's 12, with the 12 uh, uh, apostles. But this woman, verse 2, she was pregnant and was crying out in birth pains and the agony of giving birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. So there's this one sign, a great sign, and now this other sign. This is the one that involves uh, uh, and brings in uh, the character of Satan. He's depicted here. He appears in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on his heads seven diadems. He, he's always trying to ape God, uh, you know, mimic God. Uh, uh, earlier in the book of Revelation, there's a, uh, one of the visions is given of the Lamb of God, and uh, where the, the Lamb has you know, seven horns and uh, uh, seven eyes. Again, uh, again picturesque. Uh, 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 with very symbolic representation here. And so Satan, always trying to mimic, but always falling short and, and turning what is beautiful into, uh, what God creates as beautiful into uh, rather sinister and ugly. I mean, uh, you can think of uh, if God is uh, the, the perfect seven, uh, seven, 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 then Satan is always trying, but always falls short, and he just is the, the six, 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 uh, an unholy trinity. Uh, where the numbers, uh, again, not trying to read too much into the numbers, and yet the numbers do definitely have symbolic content and import. So uh, uh, here is Satan, the great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on his head seven diadems. His tail, the dragon's tail, swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. So we've heard this language before, certainly in, in connection with Lucifer uh, being cast down and to the earth where they are, uh, uh, where some of them roam. We heard last week about how some are, are bound in prison. Uh, others, even when they are on earth, <laughs> there is a sense in which they are so gloomy and miserable and in dark and dead places that they are bound there, even sometimes when people try to bind them with uh, chains and manacles uh, uh, that they are able to break off. But it's, a, it's a, a horrible thing. We don't feel pity for these demons who have, who have chosen their lot and cast in with Satan. Uh, and yet their existence, as we'll see also in the gospel, uh, when Jesus casts one of these demons out, uh, uh, they come as a, like a, a, a poor uh, 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 suppliant. Uh, suppliant before, uh, you know, petitioning God, uh, even though they uh, bluster and uh, try to present themselves as, you know, being likewise powerful and, and being on a, a equal par with Jesus. But no, uh, that quickly turns to them simply having to plead and then obey as they are cast out. But here the third of the stars of heaven uh, are cast out uh, to the earth, and here the, the stars are representative of those evil angels. And here again, you know, a third. We've, we've talked about how numbers, you, you're very careful with uh, assigning too much. Uh, uh, that's not to say that, you know, 66% of the created angels remained uh, 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 as good angels, and 33% uh, you know, followed Satan. Uh, it's probably sufficient to say that uh, uh, 
a, while a, a, a minority, still a, a sizable minority, you know, one third uh, uh, of the uh, angels follow Satan. God having created them, as we said, in order uh, to, to do, uh, you know, he does not create them that they must love, honor, and serve him. Uh, he creates them freely that they are able to despise him. And uh, sadly, these do, as they follow Lucifer, who wants to exalt himself to the very throne of God, uh, to make himself uh, as the Most High. Uh, continuing, continuing in verse 4, And the dragon stood before the woman, who we saw earlier, who is the, uh, uh, clothed with the sun, uh, the moon under her feet, and she was about to give birth, so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. And you see, I mean, you're already getting a, a full whiff of the enmity uh, that uh, uh, the, the, the dragon, the serpent, Satan, has uh, with the, the woman, uh, echoes of Genesis chapter 3, and his designs uh, against God, against the Son, uh, which we see, you know, borne out by all the attacks and the assaults of the devil from, uh, from Herod, wanting to uh, kill the, the little boys of Bethlehem and into the, uh, the 40 days in the, of the wilderness tempting. Uh, uh, the, 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 the dragon stands before the woman who's about to give birth so that when she bore her child, when he comes, he might devour it. He prowls around seeking whom he may devour. She gave birth to a male child, rather specific here, one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron, so who is that? The one who rules all the nations. This male child, this of course is, this is a Christmas. So you've got a grand sweep of history. Now, rather than go into great detail of the earthly ministry of Jesus, uh, this moves right ahead. It kind of uh, dwells on the, the, the triumph of God. Uh, uh, it, it doesn't even speak of the death and resurrection, although that's uh, assumed here. It, it says that uh, this child, just after he's born, uh, uh, but her child was caught up to God, you know, ascends to God. Jesus ascends into heaven uh, 10 days uh, uh, or uh, uh, you know, 40 days after the resurrection of uh, his resurrection from the dead. Uh, her child is caught up to God and to his throne. So this child, this male child rules not only the nations, but uh, uh, in the heavens as well. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she was, uh, where she has a place. First of all, isn't this marvelous? Wilderness doesn't sound like the most marvelous place to go, but the the woman, as she flees, so there is some, uh, you know, hunted aspect there. Uh, this is the church. This is us. This is uh, 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 even to the present moment. So here again, a perfect example of this grand sweep of one of these visions in the uh, book of Revelation, that uh, uh, Jesus has ascended into heaven to fill all things, not to be absent from us, to, but, but to be even more present, precisely in the places where he says he will be for us. So, so go there, be there for the gifts he gives. Uh, but the woman flees, flees into the wilderness, but she has a place there. And it's not just a place, it's a place prepared by God, so known by God and uh, settled by God for for the church, for the woman, uh, in which she is to be nourished. So yes, your time is in the, the wilderness, this side of heaven, uh, the, the time of the, the church these days. Uh, in fact, it says for 1,260 days. And uh, this is a great example. It's This is kind of used in a couple of different ways, uh, uh, the, the numbers here, but the uh, uh, here it's put as days. If you, if you use... Uh, roughly 360 days as a year, then uh, if you do the math, you can get your calculators out, I'll, I'll wait. Uh, you'll see that uh, 1,260 days is uh, you know, three and a half years. Uh, elsewhere in, uh, I think it's in Revelation, might be some other places too, it's spoken, the, the term is 42 months, which if you do the math, uh, uh, 42 months is also three and a half years. There is another time, uh, or another place where this is, uh, this time is referred to as a time, and then times, so there's a time and then times, plural, which is like two more times added to the other time, and then half a time. 
And they're all, they all say it differently, but they're all speaking symbolically of this, this three and a half years, 1,260 days, 42 months, however you want to say it, time, times, and half a time. Uh, it is uh, the time of the church. It's not the full four years of, 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 uh, 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 of our existence here on earth. It is uh, uh, a great deal of that, uh, uh, the majority of it, uh, so that the end is coming, and yet here we are in the midst of these days until uh, the judgment comes. Uh, hang in there, you know, uh, uh, the days are being counted, and uh, our, our Lord will come on the clouds uh, as the great judge. So that's kind of behind that. But anyway, here you can, just in the, in the course of, uh, uh, you know, six verses, you have uh, the entire uh, sweep of history from uh, uh, the birth of Jesus, uh, death and resurrection, his ascension to heaven, and the uh, longing for his return to judge. I mean, it's, it's an outline of the creed uh, from the God who uh, creates his people, uh, who then sends his son born of a woman, this male child who will rule all the nations, and indeed does by his grace. Uh, and so that is that, that picture there, the, uh, the, the sweep of the uh, angels being brought down when the, you know, the stars being cast out of heaven kind of you know, dramatically portrays, you know, kind of vividly pictures. Again, look at that Albrecht Durer woodcut, if you can hunt that down on, uh, uh, on uh, some Google images. Uh, it's, you know, that's the dragon pulling down the other angels uh, with him in his rebellion uh, against God. So, uh, and again, to think of this, well, it's a third of the stars, not trying to make that a, you know, a, a literal number, but more of a symbolic number in, in, in this sense, that uh, uh, it is a, uh, it's a, a sizable minority. This is a, a, a force to recognize and to be reckoned with, in which Christ will reckon. Uh, but it's also not a majority. Uh, it's only a, a third. Uh, and and here, in this rather picturesque way, this is the only place in Holy Scripture that uh, kind of suggests the uh, at least comparative number of angels that the dragon took with him in his opposition to God. And uh, 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 this brings up the, 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 the question about, you know, having been cast down to earth, uh, uh, even as we heard uh, last week from in Second Peter chapter two and in Jude chapter six about the Lord, uh, you know, imprisoning them. What is the that sense of their imprisonment? That even you know if they're roaming free and yet they're still bound in some way, they certainly live a gloomy, uh, awful existence. These these angels who who. Uh, these demons who follow after Satan, but uh, yeah, uh, maybe another glimpse of this. This is you know you know prior to Christ's ascent into heaven, uh, uh, the devil and his angels were allowed into God's presence in, in some respect. I'm, I'm thinking here of uh, of uh, in like the Book of Job, which again is you know one of the poetic books, and yet those first couple chapters kind of lay out the. The, the narrative and the history of Job, his, his possessions, his family, uh, his, uh, uh, his, his relationship with God. And, and we read in Job chapter 1, just to kind of touch base with in, in terms of how, how the Satan, the accuser, here it's kind of a, a title before it becomes a name, but that's what the word Satan means. He is the accuser, which we hear over and over again, the, the, the accusing aspect. He is the prosecutor. You know, he... he he does it all. He, he lays out temptation. He leads you to sin. He makes promises of, 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 how, uh, of, of how good things will be. You will be like God. Look how wonderful the fruit is. It'll make you wise. Uh, and then once we disobey God, he is the first one there with the finger in your chest saying, uh, 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 look what you have done. And uh, you know how can God uh, uh, care for one who so openly uh, uh, and insolently disobeys his word. But here in Job, as there's this sort of a, a assembly of the holy ones uh, in heaven, this, you know, this, this lordly council in which God is present and others are, uh, Job 1 verse 6, again, just kind of holding this image in our mind. Again, it's a kind of a, a, a literary description, but there was a day, so this happened, when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan uh, also came among them. 
Um, uh, so there's this, and, and here, to keep in your mind, this isn't a, a, a Satan, he has to present himself. You know, there's a, still a, the sort of the, uh, uh, he is a petitioner uh, allowed into the, uh, the presence of God rather than someone who can uh, boss himself in as much as he would like to as, as an equal and suggest that, uh, here, I'm, I'm here to talk across the table with my, uh, my arch nemesis, uh, the, the true God, Yahweh, the Lord. Uh, no, the sons of God come to present themselves before Yahweh, the Lord, and uh, Satan uh, also came among them. The Lord said to Satan, uh, from where have you come? And Satan answers saying, uh, from going to and fro on the earth, to where he has been cast down, and from walking up and down on it. Uh, and then there's the, uh, the question of Job, and uh, although uh, uh, Satan wants to do harm, he is uh, unable to uh, harm Job, but his possessions, his family, and uh, the, this great uh, suffering that comes upon Job. Uh, Job 1 and uh, chapter 2 kind of, uh, in fact, Chapter 2 begins the same way, and there was, uh, again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and, and Satan also came. So again, this roaming to and fro, there's a, you know, before, you know, prior to the ascension uh, of Christ into heaven as his, you know, his crowning uh, glory, uh, that which, uh, uh, to, to confirm his, uh, in, in his human nature, that uh, the one, the divine one, uh, you know, exercising fully now as a man all the uh, uh, divine powers that he always had access to and would make use of. But now, uh, as he ascends into heaven, uh, 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 this, this session at the, the right hand of God, this position of power, which is everywhere. But that in some respect, the devil and his angels are allowed to God, into God's presence and, and into heaven. And, you know, so you know, where are they now? Where do they have access? Do I need to fear them? Um, so that even following uh, their fall and being cast out of heaven, uh, uh, as we see in Job, as we'll look here in Mark chapter 5 in just a moment, that uh, 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 the devil and uh, his evil angels ha had in some respect access, not, you know, power and authority to, uh, in, uh, to assert, but access to to God's throne, and uh, as we're going to see with this you know, incident of these uh, numerous demonic possessions uh, that Jesus encounters during his earthly ministry, where, again, it's not a contest between good and evil, and gee, I wonder who's going to win, even when the, uh, uh, the demon makes blustering uh, uh, threats and uh, uh, you know, rears up in a powerful and menacing way, it is still Jesus who simply says, depart. O unclean spirit, and uh, and oftentimes the uh, uh, as we'll see in Mark chapter five. In fact, let's let's turn there. Uh, you'll see uh, how how the uh, how the demon must obey. The demon is uh, uh, not on equal footing here. He too must obey the word of the Lord. But let's look at Mark chapter five because this gives us a, a rather marvelous picture of the uh, uh, of a demon kind of prowling to and fro on the earth, uh, uh, still having a rather miserable existence. They have been cast down. There is gloom and darkness. There is a sort of imprisonment uh, to this. Although, like we said, there, uh, you know, some of the demons are bound in hell, and that's where they are. Others roam with a certain level of allowed freedom. But even here, as it becomes clear, their existence is rather... Is, is rather uh, 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 shoddy, which is you know, fine with us. But Mark chapter 5, uh, Jesus uh, uh, in the country of the, the Gerasenes, uh, that's kind of, uh, I think, south, uh, southeast of, uh, uh, of uh, the Sea of Galilee. And uh, uh, Jesus steps out of the boat, verse 2. Immediately there met him out of the tombs a, a man with an unclean spirit. What can we discern from this about this demon that possesses this man. First of all, it, it, there's, Mark loves the, the, uh, the word immediately or you know, suddenly. I mean, Mark's is the shortest gospel. I, th I don't know how many times he uses that term, but boy, he keeps the uh, narrative going. You know, this happens, then this happens, then this happens immediately. Uh, so as Jesus makes himself present, 
Now suddenly he's confronted with uh, a man out of the tombs. And what is the fact that this man, uh, this demon-possessed man, this man who does not own himself now, but is possessed by this, this uh, uh, satanic uh, uh, being, uh, he's in the tombs. The tombs are a, 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 a place of death. Uh, to be in the tombs would make, uh, as one would not be allowed to touch a dead body without becoming unclean, you know, ritually unclean, unable to participate in the things of God until one had been made clean. Uh, uh, this uh, demon-possessed man is, you know, he hangs out in the place of death, in the cemetery. He, uh, he's a man with an unclean spirit. Uh, he lives among the tombs. No one could bind him anymore. That had been attempted. Uh, again, he's, he's bound in a certain way, but they had tried to bind him with uh, a chain. He'd often been bound with shackles and chains, but he, he wrenched the chains apart. So some, some rather uh, 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 notable strength here. He broke the shackles into pieces, but again, uh, uh, so no one had the strength to subdue him. And yet there he is imprisoned in one sense, there in the uh, 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 in this cemetery, in the graveyard, in the tombs. Uh, I know archaeologists have. Uh, uh, I think this is the area where they they found some of these, um, uh, you know, kind of cave tombs, which are you know actually uh, the, they're man-made caves in which bodies would have been buried that would have been dug out of some of these rocky uh, outcroppings and uh, you know, large enough. For a living space, this is a not a great place to live, but where this is where this demon, who has taken over this man, has taken up residence in this place of death. Uh, night and day, verse five, among the tombs uh, uh, and on the mountains, he was always crying and cutting himself with stones. So the, the poor man himself was being possessed, but the demon that does these things, he you know, look at what the, look at the the high life of the demon, you know, one who cries, one who uh, uh, harms himself, harms his, uh, the body he possesses you know, with stones. And here is the encounter now between this fallen angel, this follower of Satan, who had made his own choice, uh, with the, the very Son of God, though appearing rather humbly in this flesh, this, uh, the, the God-man Jesus of Nazareth. For when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and fell down before him. Again, kind of the position of, I mean, it's a demon, but he, he is naturally drawn to, you know, bowing down before the greater, uh, as if he knows his place, even if he's going to make some demands, which he does. He, he kind of comes out and, you know, in one moment, he's, he's uh, trying to use words to gain control over Jesus, where he says, uh, he cries out with a loud voice, yeah, I'll, I'll shout, I'll, I'll, I'll make myself bigger by my, by my screaming. And uh, what have you to do with me? Jesus, Son of the Most High, uh, Son of the Most High God, uh, uh, this, <laughs> this, this horrible concern uh, of his now presented with the presence of God himself, and the demon recognizes what uh, uh, other mere mortals, other created men and women, didn't always recognize about the man Jesus, that he is the Son of the Most High God. Most High God being one of those... Uh, uh, not used as often as the you know the name Lord or uh, Yahweh in the Old Testament, but still a a recognized form of who God truly is, and you know, that He is the Most High. There's no one higher than Him. He is the Most High. For Satan, who wanted to present himself and and exalt himself higher than God, no, he is he is cast down. But here is this uh, uh, demon who speaks uh, and screams out loudly in order to uh, gain. Uh, uh, gain a bit of uh, 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 stature, uh, son of the Most High, I adjure you by God. Isn't this interesting? You know, that adjure, I mean, as though he's uh, uh, trying to gain control of Jesus, but by God. I adjure you by God. And here's, the, here's a, his little supplication, to not torment me. You know, he comes out with uh, great bluster, and then he ends uh, with... Uh, 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 begging Jesus not to uh, uh, to expel him uh, too far away, you know uh, these pigs, as as uh, uh, as he'll uh, ask, and Jesus actually grants that little petition. 
But the, the demon-possessed man says, I adjure you by God, do not torment me. He knows torment and punishment is his lot. Uh, uh, Jesus was saying, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Jesus asks the man, what is your name? And the man replied, my name is Legion, for we are many. Again, another indication, although it's just one man, there, are, there is a legion. At least, if we can believe the name Legion, we talked about Jesus uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane when uh, they come to arrest him and uh, they, they fall back. And he says, don't you know that uh, uh, you know, I could call upon a, a legion of angels, you know, my good angels. And this 6,000 was kind of the size of the Roman legion, but it's you know, thousands, many thousands uh, that Jesus could call upon, but he does not because this is for what he has come in order to uh, uncomplainingly, uh, voluntarily go forth in our place uh, to, to die on the cross for, the, for our sins, to give us life to defeat death, to crush Satan underfoot. But this demon says, my name is Legion, for we are many. And again, verse 10, the, the, the demon begged him. So now it's not, uh, I adjure you by God. Uh, now it's this uh, demon groveling, begging Jesus to not send him out of the country. Now a great herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. They, they begged him saying, send us into the pigs. And we know they're not Jews because the, the Jews wouldn't be having a, a, a herd of pigs. But there are a number of pigs. Even think of the, uh, you know, so too often we hear this just as a, as, a, as a Bible story rather than thinking of the, uh, the, the fact that this is laid down, this account that, that happened, you know, that, that men and women witnessed and, and people you know, saw and, and uh, participated in. Uh, that there are, uh, when Jesus uh, gave them permission. Again, the demon is not in charge here. The demon must come out. Jesus does grant the request though. He gives them permission. The unclean spirits come out. They enter the pigs and the herd numbering about 2,000. I mean, I can in my mind imagine, you know, 100 pigs and that's probably quite a mess. But here's 2,000. And now that the demons have left this man and left him whole, and left him thanking God and even wanting to follow Jesus. Uh, the, the demons go into the pigs, uh, down the steep bank, into the sea, and are drowned in the sea. They are destroyed. That is the, the judgment against them. And then the, the follow-on story. I mean, imagine being the herdsmen who have to report back to the, the owner of the, the 2,000 pigs, however much money that was worth the, uh, the owner of the, the pig herds. And... Uh, isn't this something? After all of this, after Jesus showing himself to be the Son of the Most High, casting out Satan, not in a uh, rough and tumble contest as to see who wins, but speaking him out by his word, for Satan is defeated and powerless to that word. Uh, that what do the people of the region ask Jesus to do? Well, they may they ask Jesus too to they beg Jesus to depart from their region. Uh, not fully understanding the, the, the day of God's visitation there for them. Uh, may we uh, rejoice and uh, 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 see precisely where he comes. And with the, the power over Satan, given by his word, the casting out of Satan, the forgiveness of sins that dismantles Satan's accusations against us when he leads us to sin and then accuses us before God of being sinners, the very thing that he drew us into doing out of out of weakness and yet here is Christ still as the uh, the great uh, defendant uh, uh, the, the great uh, uh, public defender for for us who uh, takes our place and is our our counselor and our comforter who announces his mercy and forgiveness uh, uh, he delivers us from evil he delivers us from the evil one but uh, we'll pick up a, a little bit more on this uh, uh, next time, uh, maybe explore uh, just with the, the rise of, of uh, uh, in, in some circles, the reports of a rise in, in, uh, uh, in evil and demonic activity in the world, even if it presents itself as you know, things just happening around the world uh, uh, and the, the ways that Satan, you know, through the occult and the other fascination people have, uh, the great human interest there is in the devil, which uh, can lead to uh, great misery and great uh, when one doesn't understand 
what one is dealing with. Uh, and as we see the kind of the results, in, in the human cost uh, of the, the results of the uh, revolt of uh, Satan and his evil angels. But we will pick that up next time. Uh, may God bless and keep you, and we'll see you then.